So you've probably heard us use the term brainstem sensitization as the underlying cause of chronic headaches and migraines before. So what does this mean? And most importantly, what does it mean in regards to you for your headaches and migraines? Hi, I'm Dr. Beth, osteopath here at Melbourne Headache Solutions. So first and foremost, there's a really big difference between acute headaches. Um, so like you've cricked your neck, you've woken up, you've got a headache and it disappears in a couple of hours or maybe in a day or so, okay? Um, but you're not really a headache or migraine sufferer, um, and so they just pop up occasionally, sporadically, or you know, you get dehydrated on like a 30 degree day, you drink some water and hey, it disappears. There's a big difference between that and you're a long-term chronic headache migraine sufferer where they keep coming back again and again and again and again, and you just don't know what to do about it. You've had them for months, you've had them for years, um, and there just doesn't seem to be too much of a pattern to it or alternatively you've noticed a pattern to it um, because they keep coming around your period or they come with a change in the season you're getting set off by certain foods but again you're just still not sure exactly what to do with it because they just keep coming back again and again and again and again so there's a massive difference between like the acute headaches where someone just wakes up with them um, or had a bad night's sleep or is dehydrated versus those chronic headaches and migraines. And that's because with these chronic headaches and migraines, there's this underlying disorder called brainstem sensitization. Now your brainstem is a certain area of your brain called the brainstem um, that becomes hyper excitable. Okay, it's, it's too excitable. The neurons are firing at a way too low a threshold holds so they're very easily set off okay very easily set off which means that you're primed and ready for a headache or a migraine to be set off by any little thing okay and we're all different by what sets off our headaches and migraines that's why there's a long list of triggers that can set off headaches and migraines but it doesn't necessarily mean that everything on that list will set off your headaches and migraines so for instance chocolate will set off um, migraines in some people but not necessarily in yourself the same thing with coffee sometimes it can be relieving in some people and sometimes it can be um, it can set off a migraine in others and those sorts of things um, hormones can be a really big problem for some women and alternatively they're no issue for other people so we're all different in terms of what can set off our headaches and migraines um, that but there are so many things that can set them off and for some people they have no idea what's even setting off their headaches and migraines but the most important part is and the most consistent part with everybody with chronic headaches and migraines is that this portion in their brain is sensitized it's hyper excitable and basically we've got to take this sensitive sensitivity level from being really high to being very low so it takes a really big event to actually set off your headaches and migraines like it's supposed to okay now when it comes time for this sensitivity level then there are many things that can contribute to this sensitivity okay so basically one of the big contributing factors for a lot of people are the top three joints in the neck here okay so c1 c2 and c3 right there so a lot of people have got chronic neck dysfunctions um, and they've tried having them treated before and not much has changed. Um, or they made short term changes or alternatively it made them worse. These three joints have got to be treated in a really thoughtful manner um, and a really, um, as I said, precise manner. And you've got to retrain them back into um, the correct position and stay there so that you can actually decrease that sensitivity level back down um, to a more normal level. For other people, then they've got their jaw contributing to that sensitivity level. The nerves of the face feed into that area of the brainstem and can contribute to that sensitivity level. Clenching and grinding also can contribute to headaches and migraines. You've got things like your diet as well, which contribute um, to increasing that sensitivity level. Your hormones as well. If you're deficient in certain nutrients and supplements, things like magnesium and your B vitamins and your omegas and those sorts of things can really contribute to headaches and migraines. Stress and anxiety can really contribute to increasing your sensitivity level and therefore your susceptibility to getting headaches and migraines. Having poor sleep, um, we do know that if you've got really poor sleep, then you're more likely to get headaches and migraines and keep your sensitivity level up. Whereas if you've got great sleep or even better sleep, then it means that you're more likely to have a decrease in headaches and migraines, which is fantastic. 
Exercising we know is really good for headaches and migraines. So if you're not exercising, that's a really easy thing that you can try to incorporate to try to decrease your headaches and migraines. So there are so many things that can contribute to an increase in your sensitivity level. And by changing them for the positive, that it means that we can aim to decrease your sensitivity level back down, your brainstem sensitization back down. So it makes it much harder to set off a headache or a migraine. But everybody is different. Everybody's formula to what contributes to their sensitivity level is different. So you might have a really large chunk that's contributed to your sensitivity, that is your neck. And then you've got a little bit that's your hormones, and you've got a little bit that's your diet. So you really need to have your neck really thoroughly and thoughtfully treated. And then if you make minor changes to your, um, to your hormones and minor changes to your diet, then that's your puzzle completed. For other people, then they've got a chunk that is their neck, they've got a chunk that is their jaw, and then they've got a chunk that is their stress. So then they've got to, uh, they've got to work on those three areas to make massive changes to their headaches and migraines. For other people, then they've really got to do a massive overhaul of their diet. Then they've got to work on supplementation as well because their diet has been really, really poor. And then they have a look at their hormones and they go, well, because of my diet and because of... Um, like you know my lifestyle factors then my hormones really need addressing as well and then because of that um in other areas of my life that I might be really stressed so I've got to look at my stress levels as well um, and that and then also I've got to look at my jaw um, and my neck as well so everybody's formula is a little bit different and you've got to be able to identify which areas really need addressing um, and which ones are the most significant areas that need addressing in you in order to make the biggest changes um, and the most long-term changes in you and usually it's more than just one factor it's usually more than just one thing that you need to change in order to make those long-term changes for your chronic headaches and migraines. So it's really important to be able to identify those things. And that's what we do here at Melbourne Headache Solutions. We have a look at all the factors that could be contributing to your headaches and migraines and we give you advice um, in terms of all of those areas. And if there are certain areas um, like say your hormones, um, then um, we tell you where you need to go in regards to those places. So someone that might be more appropriate to treat them might be say a naturopath um, or like a functional medicine GP, but we can help you to identify whether like your hormones are contributing um, or not. And we can give you natural advice um, because things like dietary changes um, and exercise are usually the number one things to do in terms of like hormonal, um, helping to correct hormonal imbalances and that but we have a look at all areas that can be contributing um, to your headaches and migraines and that and help you find out what your formula is so if you've got any questions or queries in regards to your headaches and migraines please drop a comment below and that hopefully you found this helpful and hopefully this has helped to clear up what brain stem sensitization is and what the actual underlying disorder of headaches and migraines is but headaches and migraines are our absolute passion no one should have to live with headaches and migraines um, they're something that absolutely rob too much time from people um, and that and if you can understand what's causing your headaches and migraines um, and what it has led you to them and you can make um, the significant changes um, that, are, uh, that have been contributing to your headaches and migraines and that's when you can see those long-term results so as I said if you've got any questions or queries please drop them below they're our absolute passion and we love helping people with headaches and migraines so give us a shout if you need us but hopefully you found this helpful thanks guys and i'll catch you next time